my name is Linda Dolkey. I'm a demonstrator with Stampin' Up! here in Australia and today we're going to be making this cute card which is using the Needlepoint Nook suite of products. I think you're really going to enjoy it so stick around and see how it's done. So today the card that we'll be making features the beautiful Needlepoint Nook suite of products. Um, if you're looking for these, you'll find them in the current Occasions catalogue. Now they are retiring or coming to an end, discontinuing on the uh, at the end of this month, uh, beginning of June. So this catalogue actually ends on the 3rd of, uh, 3rd of June and the new one will begin on the 4th. So you can get them up until then, unless they sell out first. But, um, but I'm hoping we'll still have them for a little while left yet. So the Needlepoint Nook Suite, there's some beautiful samples here on page 38 and then on page 9, it's uh, page 39, it's the components of the suite. So it's this lovely stamp set here with these beautiful um, hand-stitched looking flowers, um, hand-stitched designer series paper and when I say hand-stitched, it's photographic reality. So, um, so these lovely photographic quality. So on one side, and it's actual photos of actual uh, embroidery so one side has the more subtle and the other side has the more detailed embroidered looks I hope you can sort of see how lovely those are and on the back what they look like um, that one's the same oh actually those two are different I didn't realize that that's one's red on the back and that one's green with little stitches and then there's also this one that I'm using on my card today which has got the berry burst and the uh, um, balmy blue and lots of little tiny flowers they're really quite beautiful and I'm actually I don't actually have the whole pack here in front of me because some um, I have chopped up the pack and used some pieces or oh, there's another one that I didn't show you before there you go some butterflies so what I'm going to show you is how beautiful the framelits are and why these are really special Okay, so I've gone with this um, beautiful embroidered look with the berry burst flowers and the balmy blue. And you can see my berry burst flower that I've stamped in the balmy blue one here as well, which kind of toning with the paper. So I've gone with the colors that are in the paper. And they're colors I might not normally have put together. Berry burst, balmy blue, and mossy meadow. Okay, so they're the three that I'm using in this card today. But what I want to show you first, and what I think is simply beautiful, is this lovely detailed die that actually punches out the little holes that make up this um, stitched looking design. Okay, so it doesn't actually have a coordinating piece in the needle and thread set, it's a, it's a standalone piece. And I'm just going to bring my big shot in so that you can see how pretty this is. Oops this way the only problem with using my big shot is that it does um, wobble the camera a little bit so my apologies for that but hopefully you can see nice and clear and I've got a piece of paper here actually I might go with my this is the base paper now I want to make sure I'm going to have my strip of, uh, of DSP down this side so I want to make sure that my um, piece comes right over here to the side because I want the it doesn't really matter what's going on down on this side because that's where the DSP is going to be so I'm just going to move that out a little bit so that I can get as much of it showing as possible and put my other piece on top so I'm just using a normal sandwich for this so it's between two cutting plates and underneath I've got the thin die adapter and the base plate um, if you have a hinged plate the original ones that came out um, you would want it to be closed Okay, and then we put our cutting plates with the paper and die in between in the middle. I'll try not to wobble the camera any more than I need to. It's not going to make a very, very, very big noise because it's not actually cutting the way framelits cut. It's, let's have a little look and see what it's done. Hopefully you can see this. So it's like a stitched design. Can you see that? Isn't it beautiful? I just love it. I just think it's so, so lovely. So that's what that one does. So it's a little different to your average framelit. It leaves you that beautiful and it's great for a background or something like that. So I'm going to be using that as a background on this card today. 
Now the other ones, these framelit shapes, these ones do cut out the images in the stamp set. There's also this great banner. I'm not using this one today. But this one actually um, makes a lovely banner with these beautiful edges. Can you see those? And that looks lovely with a word or something across it. And then these two here are more stitched dots looking very similar to this one. So these ones make a lovely uh, design in your paper as well. Rather than actually cutting out the images. All right, I'm just going to show you on a smaller piece of paper how these stamps stamp. And we'll start with, I think, the berry burst. So I'm going to bring in this just piece of Whisper White cardstock. Whisper White cardstock is thinner than a lot of our other cardstock. I don't use it for making card bases because I find it too thin, but it is absolutely beautiful for stamping with. It just It's so smooth and it stamps so beautifully. I think we get better images on Whisper White than any other paper. The others are okay as well, but this is the best of all for stamping on. Um, very vanilla is pretty nice as well, but I think the Whisper White is just that little bit crisper, especially for these distinctive stamps. And when I say distinctive, See how it actually looks like it's been stitched so it's got like darker in the middle and lighter and you can see the actual um, the threads in that as if it was embroidered that's what I mean you're gonna get your best result on whisper white so I'm using my berry burst ink pad this is another color that is retiring so this one's coming to an end very soon and it's been selling very well the ink refills have already gone but the um, the stamps are still available can you see the lovely stitches in that and then I'm going to use my balmy blue for my smaller stamp you'll see them fill in when you uh, are using these clear blocks you actually see the ink kind of fill in all the space so you know that it's done properly then I'm going to use the mossy meadow for this little stamp here now something interesting you need to know about this one it's kind of it's got leaves at the end here and leaves at the end and then sort of just this blank space in the middle and what this is meant to do it's meant to actually provide the perfect distance leaves to go around your big flower so it makes it really easy but you just got to be careful when you stamp it because it's really really easy to pick up some ink on this middle bit but if you are using it for this flower it's not going to matter because the flower is going to go over the top of that anyway so just so you see how these all stamp. Now in the interest of time, I've actually gone ahead and I've cut them out earlier. And also that way we don't have to wobble the corner, wobble the camera. So I've got my pieces. I've actually gone through and cut those out. So that would be this one to cut out this one. I love how they layer and line up so perfectly. So that one there like that. This one here now the only thing is with these you just need to work out they're not symmetrical you just need to work out where they line up I should have actually paid attention when I put it out that's it there and the same with this one so this little guy here punches out you could cut them out by hand if you wanted to but it's a lot easier <laughs> to use your framelits and then run those through the big shot okay but we already have them done so away we go so now I'm going to start putting my card together I've got a piece of um, A4 whisper, uh, whisper white thick which is what I prefer for card bases so this is a much better um, solid card base in my opinion I like to use my bone folder over that um, and it's a really really nice card base These, and they fold beautifully on the edges as well um, then I'm just going to snail this front piece with that beautiful stitched design I'm going to pop that on a piece of rich razzleberry I'm just going to line it up there in the middle center it now I've also got a piece of this lovely um, absolutely beautiful paper this DSP and I'm just going to pop a little bit of snail in the back of that as well. You can use whatever it is if you like, but when it comes to DSP, I think snail is as good as it gets. Um, for maybe for other card assembly, like putting them together, you might want to use something a little bit more heavy duty, but for, for pattern paper, snail's fantastic for that. All right. I do also have 
a little strip of silver here that I have already cut um, and I'm just going to run a little bit of snail over the ends of that a little bit in the middle to keep it nice and straight and then I'm going to put that along the edge I've measured it so it's the same length as my DSP just like that and you can see this lovely design is coming out so all that's left now is for us to put our flowers on so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to work out where I want to have my leaves where do I want them to be I think I'll right about there and I'm just actually going to pop a little bit of snail on there just like that I just want it to stay there in the middle and actually while I'm here I'm going to put the whole thing on the card base I usually do that last but I've got my style handy so let's just pop it all together okay now I've got my big flower here and I'm going to start with that and I'm going to pop a few dimensionals on the back of that or three now because I want to use a bit of metallic thread um, I would probably go on the side of more dimensionals and if you're using big dimensionals they're probably going to be maybe even better the small ones um, don't give me quite as much sticky surface to work with okay I'm just going to pop that down so when it's finished this is going to go right here in the middle of those leaves which are the perfect distance apart of course for the flower and what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab some metallic thread which just fell down here it is <laughs> so grabbing some of this this metallic thread is fabulous stuff oh, I've just managed to get a knot in it so I'm going to just chop that off in the interest of not having to sit here and fix it and I'm going to start I want a little bit to go kind of let's show you the original card I don't know if you can see it this bit of metallic thread that's poking out here can you see that just adds a little bit of um, whimsy to the card um, for something so small I'm only going to use three fingers if it was a larger piece um, then I would use four and I hold my fingers slightly apart so that it's easy enough to get them um, <laughs> easy enough to get the thread off when I'm done you just keep going until you've got a reasonable amount there just whatever you think looks good there's no actual measurement no right or wrong now take my fingers out I'm just going to hold it there if a bit escapes doesn't matter this is not meant to be it doesn't have to be perfect anyway so you just want it to look um, a little bit like I said like whimsical and I'm going to hold it so it's facing me the way I would like it to go and I'm just going to pop that behind there so that my thread just sort of pops out from behind the flower now you can see there's nothing on this one that's okay um, I'm just going to add a little bit more just to hold it in place um, actually yeah just a little bit there on top sometimes it's it wants to escape and if that happens you just pop it down with a bit more dimensionals and then I'm going to pop that right in this middle bit here now see there's a loose bit there not a problem you can either hook it back under you could even if you wanted to if it's too long you can even snip it off which works as fine works well so now I've got my flower okay and then I still have my little flower which I'm actually going to sort of tuck in under here so I'll add a, a glue rod or a bit of snail to him and he's going to just end up sort of here a little bit under that maybe there actually no I think I'll lock him better on top of the leaf totally up to you you can sort of fill around with that just like that we also have a couple of leaves these are also from the needlepoint nook set these lovely little delicate leaves which cut out with the framelits as well and I'm just going to use a little bit of snail or you could use glue dots on the back and then I'm going to tuck them in wherever I think they might look good how about one right here press it down and one maybe Yep, that looks good. 
So you can really fiddle around with these and decide where you want them. And if you're not happy with where something is, you can just squeeze, sort of push it into place. The last thing to do is to add our sentiment. I'm just using the word friend also from the needle and thread stamp set. And I'm just going to line that up straight on my paper and make it go straight across, just like that. And now I have another card. You might notice I've also added a little bit of bling on this one as well. Um, these are actually, they're called Gingham Gala uh, adhesive backed sequins and there's little circles and little flowers. Um, there's different colors in these and they are continuing into the next big catalog. I like this one that's got some purple and some blue which looks like it perfectly matches my project. There you go, just like that. Little flowers or you could use the little sequins if you wanted to. So there you go, it's card number two. I hope you enjoyed that. It was a lot of fun to make and um, the colours aren't normally the colours I'd normally use but I actually really love how it turned out and that paper is just beautiful. If you love this, um, you can get it, like I said, until the 3rd of June, um, unless it sells out first, but all you need to do is contact your Stampin' Up! demonstrator um, and she will make sure that that gets delivered to your door if that's what you'd like or she can get it for you. Thanks guys. Bye.